in the Gospel of St. John, our Lord Jesus Christ says these words, yes. I am the way, yes. the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the exclusive way to God. There is no other way. When the Muslim prays, Sirat al Mustaqim, they're saying, Show us the way, Allah. And Jesus answers your prayer so that you don't have to keep praying, Allah, show us the way. Because Jesus Christ says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to God the Father except by me, Jesus said. So the only way back to God is through the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Jesus himself said before the Roman governor Pontius Pilate, he said, I have come to bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth Here's my voice. And though it's present continuous, present continuous, goes on hearing my voice. So if you are of the truth and I am of the truth, we will come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We will go on hearing his word. Jesus Christ himself said of his followers, my sheep hear my voice and they do not listen to the voice of strangers. They don't know the voice of strangers. He says, I know my sheep and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. If you're a sheep and in the Jewish law, a sheep was a clean animal. Why? Because it chewed the cud and parted the hoof. The pig was an unclean animal because it parted the hoof, but it didn't chew the cud. And so the pig was unclean, the dog was unclean. The dog does not chew the cud, neither does it part the hoof. And so Jesus said that his followers were clean animals, clean sheep. He said, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I'm known by mine. Jesus Christ said, I give to my sheep or my followers eternal life, everlasting life. That means he is from everlasting. Those of you who think that Jesus Christ began his existence when he was born of the Virgin Mary, you're mistaken. He gives eternal life. I give them eternal life, everlasting life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father that gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And so Jesus Christ claims oneness with the Father. So how do you say there are two or three gods when Jesus Christ said, I and the Father are one, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. One God, Father, breath, and word. And we are made in the image of God. We are made to be reconciled to God. We are made to worship God. That is the purpose of man upon the face of the earth, that he might be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And in the Jewish law, we are told in Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11, we are told that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And God said, I have given it to you upon your altars to make atonement, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. And you and I, the life that we have is in our blood. And therefore, 
the blood of Jesus Christ must make atonement for your soul and my soul. We need to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It's in the Jewish Torah. It's in the Jewish law. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. There is no forgiveness of sin apart from the shedding of the blood, not of an animal, because animals' blood cannot take away the sins of human beings. But Jesus Christ said he was the Lamb of God. John the Baptist pointed to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus Christ is the Lamb. Jesus Christ shed his own blood for the remission of sin, for the covering of our sin, for the atonement of our sin. Jesus Christ has made satisfaction to the justice of God. God is a just God. You have many religions that think that God will just pardon people. He'll just forgive them without his justice being satisfied. Well, that would be an unrighteous God. Our God is a righteous God, a holy God, and the wages of sin is death. The penalty that God has pronounced upon sin is death. The soul that sins, it shall die. That's why death, not only physical death, but spiritual death came into the world because of sin. And so everyone who is born in sin and shapen in iniquity is separated from God. And Jesus Christ has come to reconcile man, to reconcile sinners to this holy God. Jesus Christ has made a way for you to be forgiven. If you're going to pay the penalty for your own sin, you must go on paying it forever and ever because God is infinitely holy and the penalty on sin is infinite punishment to the satisfaction of an infinitely holy God. Even in the Jewish law, if a beast, an animal, so much as touched Mount Sinai, it was thrust through with a dart. Even if a man or woman were committing adultery, they were stoned to death. If a person was a rebellious child or rebellious son, stoned to death. You say, why such harsh judgment? Because God is infinitely holy. And the worst thing is this, not just physical death because of sin, but eternal separation from an infinitely holy God because of the justice of God. He is a righteous God, a holy God, a just God, a pure God, and therefore God cannot have any fellowship with sinners in their sin. First of all, we must be redeemed by the blood of atonement. The blood is the atonement for the soul. And Jesus Christ, as the Lamb of God, has shed his blood to make an atonement for your soul and mine. That our sin might be forgiven. That we might be declared righteous, not because we have done lots of good works, not because we pray ten times a day, but because Jesus Christ is the perfection of God. That's where we find perfection, in the Lord Jesus Christ. We find perfection through Him who was made in all points like we are, and yet without sin. That's why Jesus Christ was willing to come into this world and suffer in the place of sinners, so that you and I, by believing in Him, might be justified, might be cleared of guilt, might be declared righteous. Why? Because of any righteousness in ourselves? No. Because we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. That's why none of us, by our works, can boast. You cannot boast that you've done a good enough work for God. It will not 
reach God's holy standards. All your prayers, all your fastings, all your gifts to charity, it will never reach an infinitely holy God who requires perfection at your hands. So the only way that you can be appearing in God's sight is through Jesus Christ, Amen. through the blood that he shed. There's only redemption ground in Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no other way that any man or woman or child can appear before this holy God only through Jesus Christ. He is the redeemer of God's elect people, God's chosen people. He redeems them by shedding his own blood. There is no other atonement for sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. That's why when the children of Israel were in Egypt, the blood of the Passover lamb had to be applied to their lintels and their doorposts. And God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. Pass over. The pass over is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I will pass over. God passes over our transgressions when he sees the blood of Jesus Christ over our lives. Is the blood of Jesus Christ over your life? If not, then you are doomed to everlasting punishment. Jesus Christ has come to save you from everlasting punishment. He is the only Savior. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. Amen. You must be saved. There is a must for you. You must be saved from sin. And the only way to be saved from sin is because Jesus Christ has made satisfaction for sin by going down into death. The only way that God's justice is satisfied against sin is by Jesus Christ, the sacrifice, the korban, God giving himself for our sins in the person of his beloved son. God, of course, God cannot die. God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. But in Jesus Christ, God is giving himself in sacrifice for our sin, for your sin and my sin. And those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ have the assurance that their sin has been laid upon him. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. As far as the East is from the West, so far he removes our transgressions from us. And this is the great news of the gospel. This is the good news. But the question is, have you received him? We're told in John chapter 1 that he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, whether Jew or Gentile, to them he gave the power and the word in the Greek is exousia, the adoption right to be the children of God. Amen. That's what he gives. That's what Jesus Christ gives to those who are born, not of their pedigree, not of blood, not because they've lived a very good life, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but he gave eternal life to those who are born of God, Amen. born from above. Have you been born from above? Yeah, we met with Lord John. Yes. Yes, I'm a total believer in Jesus Christ, the Almighty God and Savior. Amen. God yeah, bless you, John. So, do you want to come and speak? Yeah, I can come and say something. Thank you, John. I may not speak. Well, let's let, let, break. Come. Okay.